It's such a pleasure to see all of you. Good morning. Good morning to all of you. Uh, I'm Zaida. Just for a small introduction, I started my career as a gynecologist. And while practicing gynecology, and there were a lot of times when I found so many of patients with postpartum blues. And that was a time when I was not actually uh, highly qualified to help them out. And now when I go back and think about it, uh, I feel it is so important to know all these things, which is uh, from the psychiatry point of view, treating those kind of patients also. So I went back to training in psychiatry. I end up teaching in the medical college. I'm assistant professor at LECAM um, at Seton Hill University. So, uh, I have no urgency going to the bathroom like Savdar had. But, but I have problems with the blood sugar levels. But if you see me tremors or sweating or like that, so just take it normal. It happens to me sometimes because it has a genetic component to it. Now, Dr. Wagner was talking about the genes and all and epigenetic. And I think it is very important, although I'm talking about the thyroid issues, but Epigenetic is a very, very uh, important thing to understand, and I will reflect a little more on that because it is in association with all the medical illnesses which we are facing these days. And the concept of epigenetic has, uh, in fact, is from past two decades, and it is a lot of research is going on. And how I'm going to present these thyroid issues is I'll start with a small. Uh, discussion about what normally the thyroid gland is and what hormones are secreted, how they affect our body, what are the factors which are affecting our thyroid health and what is the role of epigenetic and then how it affects the mental health and then how we can integrate these uh, all problems into integrative medicine um, in addition to the regular treatment which we give. So. Uh, so what is a thyroid gland is a small butterf butterfly shaped gland found it is near in the base of the neck and it produces two hormones. Do you hear me well? So these hormones um, are uh, major metabolic hormones and they are in fact practically all the tissues of the body in addition to the thyroid gland and they are distributed in all the body system, including the heart, the GI tract, and it affects our sleep, mood, and even growth, hair, skin, nails. So it's a very important hormones of the, of the body. I hope I can change this. Okay. So how it is regulated? The regulation is through the central nervous system in which we have hypothalamus. Hypothalamus secretes the hormone, which is thyroid releasing hormone actually, it's a factor which affects on the pituitary gland. And from the pituitary gland, TSH, with thyroid stimulating hormone is secreted. That acts on the thyroid gland, and then we get T3, T4, mostly when we go to the doctor's office. These are the tests which are done in addition to the TSH. So these are the major regulate, regulation. It is a negative feedback in which when we have too much of a hormone in the body, the negative feedback goes to either directly to the pituitary or to the hypothalamus stating that we don't need it much. So this is how it is controlled. So how it is transported? As we, uh, as we know, this is not a water-soluble hormone. So it, is, it can act directly into the cell because cell membrane is lipid-soluble. So it acts directly on the cell and found in the circulation. Mostly it is bounded to the proteins. THG, which is thyroid hormone binding globulin, 70%, it is bound to pre-albumin and albumin. So less than 1% of the thyroid hormone is found free in the circulation. And that is the hormone which is metabolically active. So uh, 
most of the hormone is produced in T4 form, which is when we take thyroxine or thyroid, synthroid, that is T4. And it is very small percentage actually is in the form of T3. Now, it is very important for T4 to be converted into T3. T3 is metabolically active hormone, and usually it exerts its effect on all the tissues. So the conversion of T4 to T3 is important, and that is many times we are missing in practices. So there are a lot of factors that affect the thyroid function, and um, among the most important are nutrition. And in nutrition, we have iron issues. We have iodine, tyrosine, zinc, selenium. These are the factors which have a tremendous effect on the thyroid gland. And the factor which inhibit the thyroids are stress, infection, trauma, radiations, fluoride, toxins, and many others. And I'll talk about the stress. Stress can cause inhibition of the conversion of T4 to T3. So there is another thing, which is the metabolism can be shifted to T, reverse T3. Reverse T3 is inactive. So during the stress, when we are not converting T4 to T3, and we have a high level of T, reverse T3, which is very inactive, and that becomes a problem. So the problem in conversion is very important to understand. So factors that, in, that uh, are increasing the conversion are, again, I will repeat, stress, trauma, low calories, diet, inflammation. Inflammation is a very important cause. Uh, as we see now, there was, they used to say that in past that cholesterol level is very, um, causing a lot of problems with the cardiovascular system and our inflammation is the thing which is going very high, causing all the uh, diseases of the heart and in addition, all the diseases. Uh, inflammation is a very important cause. So then uh, other factors which are causing um, the effect on the thyroid is epigenetic. And I will explain a little bit what epigenetic is. Now, epigenetic is on the top of the gene. So it is not the gene. It is not changing the gene. Epigenetic is that we have a gene codes which are coding for the proteins. But Abby is on the top of it. So our cell tissue and organs differ because they have set of genes which are turned on or expressed. And they are set of genes which are turned off. So uh, epigenetic changes that switch to turn off the gene or turn on the gene. So sometimes we supposedly should be turned off, it is turned on, and vice versa. So for decade, we were thinking that we are being told all the time that we are what we eat, and what we are what we drink, and how much and how little we exercise, and whatever toxins we inhale. So with the with this breaking of epigenetic, it is in addition to what we used to think in the past is that uh, we might also be what our parents ate. We are also what our father drank. We are also what our habits are. Are we sitting during the day on a couch or are we exercising or jogging? So we are actually transferring these traits to our children and they are tagged. These are called epigenetic tag, which are passing these traits to our children. So when there is an embryo is made up of the stem cells, which can give rise to the any type of the cells. And during this uh, mechanism of methylation, in which it can differentiate into, into different kinds of cells, we have brain, we have muscle, we have skin. So genetic tags are actually passed to, to 2%. So there was a concept that when the embryo is uh, made at that time, all the DNA is changed and genetic tags are not passed. But now this is a uh, well-known fact scientifically that we do pass these tags to our younger generation and they have done the twin studies in which they have two identical things with the same gene, but they were raised in different environment and they carry the different tags. Even in the patient with the schizophrenia, if you see here, so the affected twins, um, which represent the red circles, they have methylated. 
and then I'll tell you what methylation is from the epigenetic point of view. So phenotypic disease difference in monozygotic twins result from their epigenetic differences. So here is what they have found. Two mechanisms are identified, right? So one is methylation and one is uh, histone modification. In both of these processes, these methyl groups are added to the gene, to the DNA. And they are not changing the genetic code, but they are sitting next to the region which is expressing the gene and they are, they are changing the pattern of expression. So this is the same slide. So they have uh, epigenetic control, on and off switch, and a volume node. So in regard to the thyroid tissue, there are two enzymes involved in histone acetylations. And uh, two hormones, which are same kind, like a steroid hormones, are glucocorticoids and uh, thyroid hormones. So they have increased acetylation, so they will have increased gene expression. And the same is true for the cancers also. There are so many genes which we have for the cancers, which are called cancer suppression genes, tumor suppression genes. And the purpose of genes is to suppress, but when we have issues, when we are in an environment which is changing uh, the tags, then we are losing that capacity to suppress the tumors. And this is how we get into tumors. So I'm stressed, this is a mom, my gene is being methylated. Now the daughter is I'm anxious. Now my gene are being methylated. And then the granddaughter. So it is a never ending story. So uh, we are passing these course to the offsprings for the future generation. So coming back to the thyroid hormone, because we are going to apply all of these things, how we are getting the thyroid diseases. So the most of the thyroid hormones are mediated through the nucleus receptors to the gene expressions. Uh, so virtually it is in every part of the, every tissue of the body, heart, skeletal muscles, liver, kidney, um, and it has effect on the fetal brain, skeletal maturity, increase in the basal metabolic rate, it increases our energy production, which is ATP. It has this effect on heart, increasing the force of contraction of the heart, heart rate, stimulates gut mortality, increase the bone turnover. So it has a lot of function, increased glucose, decrease, and many times when we have issues with the thyroid, we also have issues with the uh, blood sugar regulations. So play a role in the thermal regulation too, and that's the reason sometimes when we have hyper or hypothyroidism, either we are cold or we are hot. So, What is the role of the thyroid hormone in mental, uh, mental health? So if we see these hormones, actually these are the substances which are produced by the endocrine glands and have tremendous effect on the bodily processes, all of these glands, for the growth and development, mood, sexual activities, function, reproduction, metabolism. So the level of these hormones, such as those produced by the thyroid glands, can be factors in the mood disorder. The same is true about condition in relation to the menstrual cycle, such as PMS, perimenopausal, or menopausal states. So thyroid diseases can affect our mood, primarily causing anxiety or depression. And it has been studied that it is also associated with bipolar affective disorder and cognition, especially in the elderly people. And hyper hypothyroidism can lead to dementia, confusion, and personality changes. So one hormone can cause a lot of things. But the good thing is that most of these disorders are usually reversible with proper treatment, indicating that thyroid hormones alteration of the adult onset and do not leave permanent structural defects. So we have... Uh, Hyperthyroid, hypothyroid cancer, and thyroiditis. 
So I will focus more on two diseases, which is hypothyroid and hypothyroid, in which um, we have Hashimoto's thyroiditis and we have grave disease. So 70% um, of the thyroid issues are grave diseases. And sometimes we have autonomous nodules, lump. We can have inflammation of the thyroid gland where the thyroid can leak thyroid hormone into the blood. And sometimes with the oral medication, um, T3 or when we are taking replacement therapies, we can get into hyperthyroidism. So talking about the grave disease, it is an autoimmune disorder and it has antibody directed against the TSH receptors and it is responsible for 60 to 80 percent of thyrotoxicosis. So again, it is an autoimmune disease. It is the most common form of hyperthyroid and occur when the immune system mistakenly attacks the thyroid gland, causing it to enlarge and cause overproduction of this hormone. So it leads to the host of tons of problems. So what are the signs and symptoms? So commonly we have anxiety, irritability, tremors. Now this is hyperthyroidism symptoms. Heat insensitivity, weight loss, enlargement, like a goiter, which is not very common here, actually in the United States, weight loss, despite normal eating habits, enlargement of the gland, change in the menstrual cycle, sexual dysfunctions, bulging eyes, thick red skin, usually on the shin, and irregular beat, and palpitation. And that palpitation can actually give us a lot of anxiety. So nervousness uh, give us a lot of anxiety. So what are the risk factor? the family history, and then I will talk about the family history also, how we can overcome that gender. Women are more prone to the uh, thyroid diseases as compared to the men, and especially women who are 40, and also in people or women have other autoimmune disorders, like diabetes. Diabetes is also autoimmune. Rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disorder, and people who are emotionally or physically stressed. They have more chances of getting this disorder. Smoking is one of the cause actually. Smoking is culprit for our immune system and pregnancy. How we diagnose this disorder? Most of the time it's a simple test. We test the thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH, and free T4. We see the antibodies and nuclear scan. So what will be the treatment? Treatment is to reduce um, hormone production, reduce the amount of the thyroid tissue, so antithyroid medication. And among antithyroid medication, there are few options. Radioactive iodine is another treatment and subtotal thyroidectomy. But the symptomatic treatment is for propanolol because propanolol can control the heart rate. So we'll move on to hypo. Autoimmune Hashimoto thyroiditis is the most common in developing countries. Actually, the most common is the iodine deficiency. In iodine deficiency, it's not here, it's an issue. Mostly they put the iodine salt, iodinized salt. That has helped uh, tremendously. In the United States, Hashimoto's thyroiditis is the most common, and mostly in women, and especially, again, with the family history of the autoimmune diseases. It involves the immune-related inflammation and destruction of the gland, uh, which reduces its proper functioning and production of the hormone. So it's still um, uh, the exact causes and trigger of the Hashimoto's thyroiditis is not known. Sign and symptoms, fatigue. And when we have fatigue, how it is in relationship with the mental health. So anything which is causing us fatigue, pain, leads us to depression and low mood. So it is in direct relation with the symptoms also. Increased sensitivity to cold, constipation, dry skin, unexplained weight gain, 
puffy face, muscular ache, thinning hair, slow heart rate, and uh, decreased sex drive. So a lot of uh, signs and symptoms in the hypothyroid. But what we have to focus is that the bigger problem that is often ignored actually in the mainstream medicine or conventional medication is the immune system. Hashimoto thyroiditis is an immune problem and just don't a thyroid problem. I got it. I have five minutes. <laughs> Put it down. <laughs> so when we have immune problem, unfortunately, the thyroid hormone do nothing to address the thyroid autoimmune attack. So it's, we need to do the additional strategies to uh, understand from where this immune problem is coming from. Replacement of the thyroid hormone will not uh, affect the immune system. The immune system need to be understood. So there are many parts of the immune system. Two very important are TH, T, thyroid health, these are uh, T helper cells, one and two, and they both are working in a different directions. Now T1 can produce interferons, gamma, interleukin-2, and tumor necrosis factor, and they are responsible for the cell-mediated immunity. T2 is different. It is responsible for the uh, in, uh, several other macrophage functions. So if our immune system goes out of the balance because of the stress, physical or chemical emotions, one system disturb the other and one system of the immune system take charge, uh, so it becomes dominant and will cause our immune system to attack our body. So normal response is that we have antigen, we have antibodies production, and then we have, we are protected, we have antibodies in our body for the next attack so that we can overcome any infection which we have. In autoimmune diseases, immune system forms antibody against our self-antigen and they start attacking them. So diagnosis and treatment of hypothyroidism for the purpose of thyroid hormone replacement therapy, the goal is to give thyroxine, and most of, most of the people get synthroid or thyroxine, which is T4. What important thing we need to understand is, as I said, in the periphery, if you're not converting T4 into T3, T3 is your active hormone. If you, we are not converting that, we are not getting the benefit. So now, the combination therapy is getting more popular, which is, uh, if it is a prescription medication, it is thyrolar. So in addition, to just having this kind of a therapy, it's very important to understand that how we are going to fight against all of this immune, immune system, which is causing damage to our body. So integrative approach is very beautiful, in which we have long-term regular physical exercise, and I think we have emphasized in all our lecture, Sabdar has talked about that, and anti-inflammatory diet, which is rich in antioxidants, fruit, vegetable, and loaded with many different Oxidants, iodinized salt, fresh fish, sea water is very good sources. Weight, weight control is very important to get rid of the free radical productions. Tobacco is very important to avoid tobacco and excessive sun exposure, avoid junk nutrition, occupational ex exposures of different things. Then again, the biggest part is the spirituality and dealing with this process. And spirituality is one of the factors which can really lead you to help you for meditation aspects also. Although the religion is not what spirituality is, could be religion and spirituality together. Leading a faith base or regardless of you are having any faith, just you can find your spirituality through music, art, or connection with the nature and meditation and how meditation can decrease the stress, help reduce stress, boost your immune system. And this, this is actually a, uh, is a research base that uh, meditation help dealing with the, boost, boost the immune system, uh, help with the immune system, and make us healthier and happier. And then comes the supplement, role of supplements and vitamins. Supplements are good. So supplements uh, which are very good to optimize health, uh, mostly I would say is the multivitamin, 
multivitamin formula, fish oil, and vitamin D. And especially in uh, Pittsburgh area where vitamin D is, uh, all the time we have grays and we don't have a sunlight. Herbal medications, supplements, they are many of the botanicals. What I know are effective is ginger and turmeric for the thyroid, but in moderation. To take the confusion out of the vitamin supplement, I would recommend to consult your physician and design these herbal medication according to your need, especially when you're taking the other conventional medicine. So uh, in moderation, and that's because many times herbal medication can have interaction with the drugs which you are taking. And then they can have different effects too, like this. If you're taking too much, just kidding. Okay, so the one key component to healing is learning how to optimize the mind-body connection to achieve state of deep relaxation, along with assessing the inner healing wisdom of the body to give us insight about further options in life. Thank you so much for listening.